Breaking news on what happened to four U.S. troops ambushed and killed by ISIS fighters last year in Niger. The Pentagon's long-awaited findings were released today, and they cite multiple failures, but there's no direct blame here. Investigators say that two junior officers actually falsified documents to get approval for that unsuccessful mission. The four soldiers who were killed in the ambush, Staff Sergeant Dustin Wright, Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson, Staff Sergeant Brian Black, and, and Sergeant LaDavid Johnson. The Pentagon says that Johnson was separated from the others and his body was found two days later. Let's listen. He was never captured alive. His hands were never bound. His serviceable equipment was stripped uh, and taken from him. Uh, but he was never in enemy hands alive. They did have access to his remains and took his equipment. So that first mission was the one that was not properly characterized. It was characterized as a civil military reconnaissance when it was actually focused on the ISIS GS sub commander. There were a series of contributing factors uh, to what occurred in Tongo Tongo, but none of those contributing factors are the direct cause of the enemy attack in Tongo Tongo. The direct cause of the enemy at attack in Tongo Tongo is that the enemy achieved tactical surprise there. Let's discuss this now with Congressman Denny Heck. He is a Democrat. And uh, Congressman, I, I just want to note, you obviously have been awaiting the findings of this. You were at the funeral at Arlington Cemetery for Staff Sergeant Brian Black. You spoke at the memorial service for Brian in Puyallup, Washington. So when you saw the results of this investigation come out today, what did you think? Well, the first reading would lead you to the conclusion that if it could go wrong, it did go wrong. But I think really when you further examine it and analyze it with a little bit more depth, uh, the heart of this thing was a confusion as to what the mission was. Uh, if there had been a uniform, clearly understood mission that had a higher level of support and intelligence support, uh, then I think we might have had a different outcome. But after, after that reading and that evaluation, Brianna, I think the important thing is in honor of this last full measure of devotion that these four special forces soldiers gave to their country. What is important is that the lessons learned be fully implemented. Uh, that is the greatest way now to honor them, is to assure that whatever it is that we learn from this is applied going forward so that it can be avoided. And you know, it's not a case, Brianna, where we'll ever say on this day, there were no casualties because of the lesson learned. It will just be the case. And that's what we hope for. I want to ask you about some of the specifics in the report. It shows that this Green Beret team wasn't trained to the degree that they should have been for this kind of mission, uh, and that the actual mission objective wasn't approved by the commander in charge of approving such missions, a lieutenant colonel who was stationed in Chad. What did you think specifically of that? Well, I think it is this mission conclude this mission confusion that was the main contributing factor to the tragic outcome. But the fact is that there were a whole series of things from a lack of intelligence support from uh, overhead su uh, services, uh, a lack of training in, in the exact way in which this team was comprised. And we could go on and on and on because it's a long list. But again, at its heart was the mission confusion, which I think was the principal contributing factor to it. Uh, Senator Tim McCain has said that Congress was misled about the nature of the military's mission in Niger. You're talking the mission confusion as you talk about it, that there was supposed to be uh, or there was this expectation that it was training and advising local troops when it's clear that that U.S. forces there in Niger also were going after terrorist targets, that this is part of the greater mission they're manhunting. Do you agree with Senator Cain? So I didn't hear directly what he said, Brianna. And frankly, in the wake of the issuance of this report, I'm a whole lot more focused on uh, Brian's widow, Michelle, and his two young sons, Zeke and Isaac, and the sacrifice that they will make for the rest of their lives, and ensuring and encouraging and conjoling and advocating and doing what I can to make sure that it, this instance isn't replicated into the future. Again, there are lots and lots, if not dozens, of things that went wrong, uh, and we need to correct for them and remedy for them, and that's my objective now. It is a good obje objective, certainly, as we think of them along with you, uh, Congressman. Uh, while I have you here, I do want to ask you about the Russia probe. Congressman Devin Nunes, who is the chair of the House Intel Committee that you're on, 
He had a classified DOJ briefing today on documents that he's seeking. You've crossed some, uh, swords with him in the past, but what do you think his end game is here with these documents? To undermine uh, Director Mueller's investigation and to ensure that the base of the Republican Party is as cohesive as, as possible should Director Mueller find that there were high crimes and misdemeanors com committed and uh, a more serious consideration and deliberation of impeachment is brought forth. That's what I think his objective is. His objective in hindsight from the day he went down to the White House for the midnight rendezvous to the famous Nunes memo that Russian bots propagated and advanced and accelerated throughout the internet uh, to this stunt today uh, pretty clearly indicates the absence of seriousness on his part about actually committing, uh, conducting an investigation to get at the truth of Russian interference in the 2016 election. Rod Rosenstein has said, uh, he said this last week, the DOJ won't be extorted. Do, do you see that happening here? in an attempt at or extortion or do I see the extortion actually occurring? Do you, uh, clearly you believe it is an attempt. Well, in the past when they have been pressured, uh, in the end they frankly have capitulated to him. Uh, he obviously occupies a seat of pretty considerable power and influence and I think they're mindful of that. But uh, when you translate it all out and you net it all out, uh, I'm going to put my confidence in the Department of Justice to do the right thing here. All right, Congressman, we really appreciate it. Congressman Heck, thanks for your time today. You're welcome.